What's up everyone and welcome to this video. In this video, we're gonna take a look at a process that I've developed to systematically approach creating a spike. Now, when working with spikes, I find one of the most difficult aspects of it is just dealing with the sheer amount of information you have to work with. You have to develop your classes or define your classes, I should say. You have to define your methods. You're not sure if you need modules yet. You're not sure about whatever. So there's just so much information that you have to deal with. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna break it down into a step-by-step -step process and just make it more streamlined. So for example, right here, we have a request to develop a sports team application. And we have all of this text kind of jumbled together. So the first thing that I like to do is just separate all the text into specific comments. And this will play a, a role in one second here. So let's go ahead and just separate this out. It just makes everything a little easier to see. All right, so for here, we have all of our different comments. Up here, we have the initial request to design a sports team. And then from looking at this comment, it says include four players, attacker, midfielder, defender, and goalkeeper. To me, that sounds like categories for different types of players. So my first instinct is to think of those as classes. And then so we would go ahead and define those classes. And they would probably be subclasses of a parent class named player. So we'll start with that. Let's say we have a class player. And I'm not sure why either Ruby or Sublime Text always indents that end. It's probably a setting that I have, but one day I'll figure out as to why. So we have attacker. Let's go ahead and make this a subclass. And we will copy this just so we can copy and paste. Let's make it easy. And we'll have class midfielder. So midfielder. I'm not sure why is this. Maybe that's just different syntax based upon it being next to a capitalized P. See how this L is different? I'm not sure why it's doing that. Interesting. Oh, well, let's keep going. So we have class defender. Let's make that subclass player. Interesting. Okay, so we have our parent class player, and then we have our different subclasses of the class player. So what we'll do now is we'll go up to the top comment, and we'll just put a little plus there just to let us know that we've already finished this portion of our spike implementation. Now the next line we have all the players' jersey is blue except the goalkeeper. His jersey is white with blue stripes. All right, so since this is basically two different requirements, let's go ahead and separate that out. So let's put this down here. So we will have all the players' jersey is blue. So we're just gonna copy this. And since it applies to all the players, we're gonna go ahead and just place that into the parent class. And now we have the goalkeeper's jersey. So let's go ahead and place that into his specific class here. And once again, we'll go back up here and place a plus, just to remind ourselves that we've already implemented this portion. So now we have all players can run and shoot the ball. So since that's two different actions, let's go ahead and break that down to separate lines. And we'll go here and just copy it and paste it. So all players can run. So let's just paste that into the parent class. And all players can shoot the ball. So we'll place that here as well. And once again, let's go ahead and add our plus. All right, the attacker should be able to lob the ball. Since this is only for the attacker specifically, we will place that into the attacker class. And go back up here, place the plus. Midfielder should be able to pass the ball, so we'll copy that. Paste that into our midfielder subclass. Add a plus up here. The defender should be able to block the ball, so we'll take this, place it into the defender subclass. Now here we have, uh, the referee has a whistle. He wears black and is able to run and whistle. So the referee is like a separate category altogether. So since he's not a player, we're gonna make our own specific class for him. So we have class, referee. 
and let's go ahead and implement his comments into our specific class for him. So it's going to break this down into individual lines since there are different implementations required. So he wears black, he's able to run, and he can whistle. So we're just going to copy these into our class here. Okay, so now that we've added everything in there, let's go ahead and add our pluses here, just so we can keep track of everything that we're doing. All right, so now that that is finished, let's go ahead and go up and take a look at our first comment. So for the first comment, we have all the players' jersey is blue. So let's go ahead and create our initialize method for that. And since it's a default value, we're not going to create a parameter because all of their jerseys are blue. So we're just going to define our constructor method here. I have an instance variable uh, jersey color. We'll set it to the string blue. We'll go ahead and end that there. And then let's remove this comment. Then we'll go down to the next comment. All players can run. So even though we already have another run method that's going to be required for the referee, and that indicates some duplicity or some duplication, I should say, in our program here, we're not worried about uh, abstracting everything to a module just yet. We're going to just lay everything out, and then if we see some duplicated, duplicated methods, we can abstract that to the module at that point. So from right here, we'll just have uh, define, run, just do like runs, do end. Go up here, remove this. And we have shoot the ball. So let's go ahead and define that. Define shoot the ball. Let's do shoots the ball. Okay, so then we'll go down to our next class here. We have the attacker. See, the attacker should be able to lob the ball. So let's go ahead and define a lob method, or is lob the ball. Lobs the ball. And erase that comment. Midfielder should be able to pass the ball, so let's just define pass the ball. Passes the ball. And we will erase that comment. And for our defender, they should be able to block the ball. So we'll define block the ball. And erase that comment. And by erasing the comments, we're just keeping track of everything that we've implemented. And then for the goalkeeper, his jersey is white with blue stripes. So what we're going to do is we're going to override the initialize method. We'll have jersey color equals white with blue stripes. And erase that comment. All right, so now that all of these are done here, we can go ahead and add the implementation for our referee class. So the referee has a whistle. So I think for this, we would just set a Boolean to true. So I say define initialize uh, instance variable uh, whistle equals true. Go ahead and end it there. Let's erase that comment. He wears black, so we'll just say uh, at jersey color equals black. Where's that comment? Now here we have, he is able to run and whistle. So since these are two different comments, we'll create two different methods for that. Able to run, let's oh, actually just call it run. And he's able to whistle. And once again, we will remove these comments.
And naturally, if we want to have any of these uh, instance variables to be output when we run a program, we're going to either need a getter method or an adder reader we could use. But just for right now, we're just doing this just to organize everything. We can add all that necessary functionality later. And that's relatively easy to do. I think the hard part is just getting everything, you know, implemented in the correct fashion. So looking at this, we already see that we have the run method listed twice. So what we can do is we can just uh, abstract that out to a module. So let's just go ahead and remove it from this class. Let's just define module runnable. And then we will include that in our player class. Actually, let's do this. Remove run. And there you have it. You know, this is a, a relatively basic example of implementing a spike, but I just think the overall approach to breaking everything down, having a systematic process for implementing all that information will make it a lot easier. So I hope this helps you out. I appreciate you checking out this video. And until next time, take care.